Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. I wanted to talk about site-to-site -site VPNs today and specifically what I'd like to talk about is Ubiquity Unify site-to-site -site VPNs. So Ubiquity Cloud Gateways support a really fabulous one-click VPN called Site Magic, and if you have the opportunity to use it, you certainly should. If both of your Unify Gateway router devices are not cloud variants, or if you are not the owner of both of these devices, then Site Magic is not going to be an option for you. And so you can use a Cloud Key Gen 2 to manage a non cloud Unify gateway to support Site Magic. But unless you're the owner of all of the participating devices, as I just mentioned, Site Magic is not an option as well. So in this video, we're going to show how to create a site to site VPN using Unify Gateways without Site Magic. On this screen, we have two screenshots of two Ubiquity Gateways. And so at the top of the screen, we have a UDM Pro Max and its default network addressed at 192.168.1. And at the bottom of the screen, we have a UXG Gateway Max default network which is addressed at 172.16.1. And one thing significant about the UXG gateway is it is not a cloud gateway like the UCG Max is. And therefore, if you had wanted to use Site Magic, you would have required a Cloud Key Gen 2 in order to accomplish that. But that being the case, this is yet one more reason why we're going to use site-to-site -site VPNs in this particular case. This is the screen you would get if you went over to the VPN option under settings and said, create me a new site-to-site -site VPN. And by default today, site-to-site -site VPNs get created with OpenVPN and the underlying technology is IPsec. In the future, they will probably be using WireGuard to accomplish this, and it'll be slightly more efficient. So we provide our site-to-site -site VPN a name, and we'll be creating a site-to-site -site VPN on both Unify gateways on either side of the link. And then we have the local IP which is the WAN address of the machine that you're on. And then you have the remote IP, which is either the IP address of the remote Unify gateway, or it is a domain name that points to the WAN address of the remote Unify gateway. And the easiest way to set this up is going to be a route-based gateway where we specify remote networks and we're gonna look at that here next. Here's both sides of the site-to-site -site VPN we've created. The first one on the left-hand side is for the UDM Pro Max, and it's called VPN to Offsite. And then the one on the right is at the UXG Gateway Max side, and it's called Link to Home. And just as a reminder, our UDM Pro Max has the default address range for the main LAN of 192.168.1.0 with a subnet mask of 24. And the UXG Gateway Max has an address range of 172.16.1.0 with a subnet mask of 24. You'll notice here also that on the UDM Pro Max side, we have added a subnet that matches the subnet of the remote network, 172.16.1.0. And on the UXG Gateway Max, we've added the complementary 192.168.1.0, which is the address range on the remote network. But then we've also added 
two more address ranges, 192.168.3 and 192.168.4. On this next screen, I've moved off of the Site to Site VPN tab and I've moved over to the VPN Server tab. On the UDM Pro Max, I have two WireGuard servers. One is named Hassan's UI Identity WireGuard server, and the other is simply named WireGuard UDM Pro. Whereas on the UXG Gateway Max, we have just one VPN server, and it's called WireGuard Offsite. UI Identity is the Ubiquity Unify turnkey way to assign WireGuard profiles to end users, and it's extremely easy to use. And this particular user had two kinds of WireGuard servers. The one is a Unify Identity UI Identity WireGuard server, and that server has a couple of clients defined on it, and its gateway address is 192.168.4.1, and it has an address range from 4.6 to 4.254. The other WireGuard server that you see pictured here is a traditional WireGuard server, and it also talks to the main LAN, and its address range is 192.168.3.1, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, and it uses 3.6 to 3.254, and he's got a number of different clients defined. Just as a little bit of a review, here's the slide that we looked at previously, and you'll notice that the UXG Gateway Max says that the address range of 192.168.1.0, as well as the two WireGuard servers, at 192.168.3 and 192.168.4 have permission to look at the local address range on the UXG Gateway Max, which is 172.16.1.0. And what this means is that anyone physically located on the UDM Pro Max side of the network is able to access any of the systems on the UXG Gateway Max side of the network. And it also means that anybody on the UXG Gateway Max side of the network can access anything on the UDM Pro Max side of the network. And in addition to that, anybody connected to either one of the WireGuard servers on the UDM Pro Max will be able to access anything on the UDM Pro Max side of the network, but also anything on the UXG Gateway Max side of the network. Although we listed the WireGuard network ranges in the site-to-site -site VPN connection, it's not enough to do that. And the reason is, is because the WireGuard servers were established on the main system where the WireGuard clients are connecting. The offsite system really doesn't know anything about those WireGuard networks, and so therefore we need to add a couple of firewall rules. So we have two LAN in firewall rules. One is called Allow WireGuard UI, which is the UI identity WireGuard server, and the other one is simply called WireGuard UDM Pro, meaning the standard WireGuard UDM Pro Max for which you manually create profiles. And now, if we go over and look at the UI Identity WireGuard server rule again over on the remote system, the address group that we've established is one that I simply called WireGuard UID, and that's that 192.168.4.0 with the subnet mask of 24. Had we not defined that, the firewall really wouldn't know what to do with that. So we have an explicit rule that says pass any traffic on that over to the default network or the main network and the offsite, which is 172.16.1.0 with the subnet mask of 24. 
And likewise, we also have a similar firewall rule where we've established a group called WireGuard UDM Pro, and it's simply 192.168.3.0 with the subnet mask of 24, which is the address range for the other WireGuard server. And then finally, we have the default network that we're going to route it to, which is the same, the 172.16.1.0 with the subnet mask of 24. What these firewall rules add to the mix is the capability of somebody being completely off-site from both networks and making a wire guard connection into the main network. They're now able to access systems that are on that main network, but also systems at the other side of the site-to-site -site VPN. So in summary, SiteMagic is the easiest site-to-site -site VPN, but SiteMagic only works with Unify Cloud Gateways. And the site-to-site -site VPNs work with the Unify Non-Cloud Gateways and also with third-party gateways if properly configured. And if the WireGuard server address range is added to the site-to-site -site VPN networks on the remote side, external WireGuard clients can access those remote networks. And in general, site-to-site -site VPNs provide a means to have remote networks joined and securely accessed from either side. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel, and don't forget to hit your notification bell and we'll see you next time.